Rodion Romanovich Raskalnikov, a brilliant student who has been forced to vacate his position at the University of Petersburg, is living in deep poverty. Unemployed, Raskalnikov resides in a small, dirty, one-room apartment, dresses in rags, and is engulfed in contradiction. While Raskalnikov is a brilliant, handsome, and proud individual, he is also behind on his debts, unmotivated to find work, and at times appears sick and delirious. Raskolnikov wanders St. Petersburg, and he appears conflicted over committing some sort of terrible crime. Raskolnikov receives a letter from his mother, Pukaria Alexandrovna, telling Raskolnikov that she and his sister Dunya are moving to St. Petersburg. Like Raskolnikov, his mother and sister are poor, but they appear to have found relief, for Pukaria announces that Dunya is engaged to a wealthy government official, Peter Petrovich Luzin. Somewhat oddly upset by the letter, for Raskolnikov believes his sister does not really love Luzin, she is only doing this to save her family from poverty. Raskolnikov again wanders the streets, where he learns an old pawnbroker, Elinova Ivanova, a woman Raskolnikov has done business with before, will be alone the next evening. Raskolnikov acquires an axe, fastens a loop in his jacket to hold it, and the next evening uses it to murder Ivanova. Raskolnikov plans on robbing her after killing her, but he quickly becomes delirious and confused only taking nearly worthless trinkets before Ivanova's sister arrives in the flat. Raskolnikov had left the door open. He then kills the sister as well, and is barely able to escape the flat without being captured. Raskolnikov becomes extremely frantic following the murders, desperately searching for blood on his filthy rags. He soon falls into sickness, and wakes up later under the treatment of a doctor and the aid of his university friend, Dmitry Prokofitch Razumikin. As he recovers, Raskolnikov's behavior is extremely suspicious whenever the murders are discussed. He faints on multiple occasions. Consequently, some of Raskolnikov's friends and family become suspicious, as does the police. Raskolnikov engages in multiple psychological duels with the examining magistrate, Porfiry Petrovich, duels which shake him and nearly cause him to confess on multiple occasions. Raskolnikov believes his physical killing at the pawnbroker was not a true crime, but he still feels extremely guilty for his deeds. Raskolnikov also despises Dunya's fiancé Luzin, someone he considers conceited, overbearing, and incorrect on many of life's core principles. During their arguments, Dunya becomes disgusted with her fiancé's behavior and breaks off the engagement. Raskolnikov eventually confesses his crimes to Sonia, a prostitute he met when her drunk father was trampled by a horse. Sonia, an extremely religious girl, begs Raskolnikov to confess, saying he will not stop suffering until he has done so. Ultimately, Raskolnikov confesses to Petrovich. Due to his confession and past good service, Raskolnikov is sentenced to eight years of labor in Siberia. Sonia, who loves Raskolnikov, follows him there. Raskolnikov's mother becomes delirious and ill, dying shortly after the trial. Dunya and Razumikin marry, promising to immigrate to Siberia in five years, when enough time has gone by to gather the necessary funds. At first, Raskolnikov is still indignant that the murders were not true crimes, but he soon realizes his mutual love for Sonia, finally acknowledging his errors and expressing true, genuine remorse. Fathers and Sons begins in Medias Race. Nikolai Petrovich Krizhnovov, a small landowner, has traveled to the welcome home his son, Arkady Nikolaevich Krizhnovov, from the University of Petersburg. He has not seen his son in years due to his staying at the university, but the reunion is joyous yet foreshadowing of differing philosophies between the father and son. Accompanying Arkady is Yevgeny Vasilidovich Bazarov, an extremely nihilistic and utilitarian individual. At Krizhnovov's estate, the differing philosophies soon become prevalent. Nikolai and his brother, Pavel Petrovich Krizhnovov are both supporters of a more traditional, aristocratic society, while Arkady and Bazarov are both supporters of nihilism. While Nikolai and Arkady attempt to put their differences aside for each other's sakes, Bazarov and Pavel loathe each other and quarrel constantly. Arkady and Bazarov leave Nikolai's estate and travel to visit a relative of Arkady's. They meet and reside with Madame Odinseva, a beautiful, independent woman who fascinates the two young men although Arkady slowly becomes infatuated with Ovinseva's sister, Katya. After 15 days of bliss, Bazarov confesses his love for Madame Ovinseva. She does not respond to his declaration, so Bazarov and Arkady leave shortly after, 
heading to visit Bazarov's parents. Bazarov's parents adore their son, but he, unfortunately, finds them boring. After staying with them for a brief period, Lazarov decides to leave with his friend for Arkady's home, breaking his parents' hearts. Arkady stays home for just three days before leaving again to see Katya. Lazarov stays longer to perform medical experiments, for he wishes to become a doctor. But he and Pavel cannot get along. Finally, Pavel challenges Bazarov to a duel, and as a result, Pavel is injured by Bazarov. However, Bazarov immediately offers his services in Petrovich's treatment, but the awkward situation forces him to again leave for his parents. At his parents' estate, Bazarov contracts typhus while performing an autopsy, dying shortly after. Arkady marries Katya and takes control of his father's crumbling estate, immediately improving it economically to the delight of his father. Pavel leaves Russia and lives his life as a noble in Dresden, Germany.